Why do you always have to do things like this? Shinobu... What happened to Ito? Did he pass out? The boss used up all his strength in one punch. Maybe that's the reason he managed to tear open a passage. Let me see if there's any way I can stabilize it. He did this because he heard us arguing, right? <sighs> the thing with Boss is, he just can't stand conflict between teammates. Whenever we get into an argument in the Arataki Gang, he always goes and does something shocking to calm everyone down. <sighs> Today, he's done it again. He may not have known you for very long, but when he said he sees everyone as part of the same team, he truly means that. Mm. Another thing with Boss is, he hates it when other people sacrifice themselves, but he always seems to end up doing it himself. That said, there's a slight distinction to be made with him. When he does things like this, he doesn't really think he's sacrificing himself, because he genuinely believes that he's strong enough to defeat any obstacle he's facing. Giant ego alert! And wasn't he just doing the same thing Xiao suggested? <sighs> so stupid. The boss is hardly open to persuasion. Besides, he always acts without thinking. There's no doubt that he really thought he was about to solve everything in one hit. Ugh, it's not just him either. The other guys in the Arataki gang are more or less the same. That's why they need someone like me to clean up after them. I couldn't stop him if I tried, so I might as well just let him do his thing. Besides, often his harebrained intuition is surprisingly on point. We might punch our way out of here yet. Uh, Ito, please tell Paimon you're okay. I'm sorry. Don't be. You have nothing to apologize for. Both you and Yelan made some very good points. Still, if this was an Arataki gang issue and you were one of our members, I have to say I'd side with Yelan on this one. The boss definitely wasn't sacrificing himself. He firmly believed that we'd be able to find a way out through the passage he opened up, and he's certainly not expecting to be left behind. Everyone's important. We have to support each other if we're going to get out of here. Your survival is of huge importance to some people. Uh, no, to a whole lot of people. Aww, Shinobu. Everyone, let's all do our best to try and find a way out. There's still a chance. I'm sure we can escape. Leave the boss to me. Don't worry. <sighs> Everyone, it seems this passage doesn't lead to the outside world, but deeper inside. What the? So Ito's efforts were in vain? No, it's still worth exploring. I'll go and take a look first. Aha, uh -huh, I see. I'm with you. Uh, what? So far, I still haven't found the thing I came looking for. That magical device, remember? This domain has the power to project our imaginations or the things we're searching for into reality. Well, maybe I can use that to my advantage to track it down. Oh, right! No wonder she keeps telling us to keep going. If it's a magical device, it must be super powerful. Well, I can't guarantee that, but it's worth a try. I will find a way. Let him go. But if you're planning on going into that domain too, then come with me. After all, I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> we'll be safer if we team up. By the way, um, you and Xiao seem pretty close, huh? Yelong got a bit worked up just now, so I just wanted to apologize on her behalf. I have to say, though, if Yelong hadn't spoken out like she did, I'm not sure she would have gotten through to him. Also, self-sacrifice is something Yelong feels strongly about. She tried to stop whoever it was. From what I know, she's lost comrades in the line of duty before, and then was rescued herself. Maybe being a survivor is what makes her so against seeing other people sacrifice themselves. How can things ever be the same again, knowing that your life was saved when others weren't? In a way, 
Salvation can also be a burden. If I were her, I'm not sure I would have done anything different. Oh, wait, one second. I'll be right there. Yeah! <sighs> right, that's much safer. Since Ito can't fight right now, I've cast a spell to protect you guys. Thank you, Senpai. Please, be careful. We will. Same to you. All right, Traveler, let's go. <gasps> What's this? <gasps> Look at that huge disc in the distance. Hold on. Is that the Fantastic Compass? What? That's the best description you can come up with? It's way, way bigger than that! Huh. Well, it seems our theory checked out. In my humble legal opinion, that's almost certainly the magical device I've been looking for. It really showed up. But if this really is the Fantastic Compass... It's so huge! How the heck am I gonna lug that back to my office? <clears throat> I mean, come on, Yenfei. Don't give up now. Let's investigate the area first. <gasps> what the... Are they? They look familiar. Oh, yeah. I bumped into these rapscallions a few days ago. last time. You know, when I ran into them before, I was working on a big commercial case. The defendant hired them to attack me, just to get back at me. Eh, happens all the time. Luckily I'm well trained in martial arts, so taking them down was a piece of cake. But these are the exact same guys as I met last time. Is this space recreating scenes from my memory? Maybe this is one of the ways our adversary intends to devour us. Unbelievable. There is a smaller disc here. Judging from the appearance and design, hmm. In all likelihood, this is the Fantastic Compass. Why is there a small version of the Fantastic Compass stuck in the ground? What's it for? Huh? A new entrance. Great!
might run into some other people here, but apparently not. The Fatui? Whose memory is this? Ah, watch out! <laughs> Just as I thought. Kaelon, you're here! I will take you down no matter how many times you show up. Hey, relax. We're together now. Gotcha. Flash Frost. <laughs> Let's move. And still, they dare to come after me. <laughs> You've still got it. Remember how I said I'd seen some illusions myself? Those were the same words I heard last time. The space seems to be reproducing that memory. Now that you know, at least we're all on the same page. He said the word fantastic. Was he talking about the fantastic compass? Yenfei, see that thing on the ground? Yeah, we tinkered with it. That's how we met up with you. I guess it's a miniature version of the Fantastic Compass in the distance. It has a close connection to the entire space. Hmm. It looks somewhat familiar. Let me think.
Another new space. If everywhere within this space follows the same rules, there must be another small fantastic compass somewhere around here. Osatius, I can't believe someone like you would end up as a lost soul underground. No enemies. Hold on. Wait, is the enemy hiding itself? Oh no, we should go help him. Stay back! This is my fight. Do not come near me. Filthy monsters! So many people have died at your hands! I lured you here to this underground space because I found your weakness. Hiding and ambushing from the dark is Bosatius' signature tactic. Die here with me! Huh? How did a valiant warrior like you die here? No matter. I know how this ends. <sighs> Look! Osatius is showing signs of fatigue! Osatius! Marshal Vritris! Even your strength is finite. But your illusion is not as mighty as you. This is not you in all your glory. I wonder what Rex Lapis would think if he saw what had become of the first Yaksha. Leave! I'll deal with the rest. We can't let the monsters get to the surface. Everyone, remember, we must hold the line at 60 miles outside the chasm at all costs. There is no escape! Enough! Phantom, be gone! Chu, are you okay? This is my purpose. Don't worry about me. So your invisible opponent was the legendary Bosatius, Marshal Vitris? Yes. So excuse my stubbornness. Osatius has been missing for centuries. This may have been the last time I will ever see him. He was saying something about holding the line at all costs. He fought here. The nameless Yaksha from the legends. It was him. But didn't you say he'd always announce his name? How could his name be lost to time? What happened? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe he forgot who he was. Because the karma you spoke of drove him to madness? Osatius had already gone mad before he disappeared. There was no way of knowing if his memories were intact. He still took part in the Battle of the Chasm despite having gone mad? We Yakshas are not a race that thrive in peacetime. It's likely that he was drawn by the scent of bloody war. Slaughter is what we do best. Maybe it's the only thing we know. This battle confirmed my suspicions. As we had speculated, this space reflects information from people's minds. In other words, despite going mad, Bosatius came here. The illusion we saw just now is the impression he left behind. This space recreated him as he was during the battle. The way he fought was so self-destructive. He couldn't possibly have survived. Bosatius's illusion said he'd discovered the monster's weakness and lured them underground. What kind of place could this be? Defeating Conria's monsters is no small feat, that's for sure. Guys, it could just be me, but... I think I'm suddenly feeling more tired than I was. This space is really starting to affect us. I believe Bosatius stayed here underground. But now he is gone, and only his illusion remains. 
If we don't leave, we may meet the same fate. Time to move on. You fought well, Bosatius. Goodbye. Illusion shattered! Shall we take a look? Okay, let's see. Hmm. It looks like these were letters written by the Millilith soldiers who stayed here. So, who's this Boyong they mentioned? <sighs> Boyong was... One of my ancestors. The one who didn't make it back. You mean... Boy Yang fought alongside Bosatius? I believe so. And the Millilith soldiers were their brothers in arms. I guess now we have a pretty good idea of where everyone that went missing ended up. Yes. Uh, so scary. What happened? Come on, let's not stay here. I have a gut feeling that sooner or later we'll connect all the dots, and then we'll finally know the truth. Still, who knows how this space is planning on revealing the answer to us. <laughs> 